Welcome to this look at a cracking new mod map on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. CLEP. I am here on Edgewater, Saskatchewan in Canada. This is a new mod map out by South Sask Modding and BC Beulah Farms. 254.84 megabytes to download. 8485. Um, this is a really nice map. I know I say that a lot, but it really is. This is what the map looks like. And you might be looking at those colours and thinking, what is going on? Well, three different or three new crop types have been added in. We've got flax, we've got peas, and we've got lentils. Flax, if we go across one of the crop types, flax is this purpley colour here. Peas is this bright green colour there. And then lentils is the red. The peas and lentils can be harvested and sold fairly normally. The flax is a different matter. We can do some different stuff with the flax on here. Uh, we have some required mods and things like that. As far as the custom crops go that have been added in, let's put that back and come out of there. Um, a regular cedar will plant, well seed them, plant them. So if you look down there at the bottom you've got your flax, you've got your peas and your lentils. So put them into the ground, it's just done with the cedar. Planter is as normal. Then to harvest them a regular header is required as you can see there. Flax peas and lentils but there's some other things we can do with that as well it will get a little bit more complicated but not too bad contracts are available on this map i haven't found a biogas plant yet there are it says seven farms i found seven or eight plots that you can buy that have silos on some have buildings some don't um, but so what i'll do is i'll put some money in a bit we'll buy those as we go around we'll go back to the map again because fill prices i have to say as well are pretty good we've got some fairly small plots now this is broken up and it does say in the description um this showcases some of the unique aspects of farming in Saskatchewan, Canada. Working around sloughs, sloughs, ditches and trees are a day-to-day -day task on the map. So as you can see, we've got lots of waterways, ditches, um, sections with trees, smaller fields and bits where you've got to work around them. This is not going to be a straightforward map to work on, but as far as, like I say, field prices go, 33 grand, 26 grand for some of the small ones, 208 for a bigger plot there for... 15 there 421 so even the real the sort of the big plots 579 we're not into the millions so it's actually not too bad at all um there's a custom train there's a custom calendar i have got um seasons on at the moment to show you that there's a custom crop calendar has been added in uh, including the new crop types that have been put in on here so it's a little bit different to what we're kind of used to as a standard uh, what else i'm just looking down my list uh, custom train I've said custom total mix ration for the animals which will allow for flax as well I think we might have some flax fields um, right next to us was this, was this flax I'm trying to remember now well this one might, might have been there we go flax so as I said that can be harvested and you get your flax as normal the swath that comes off that the straw swath you can bale that so you can bale the flax so the, the straw flax that you bale can then be taken to a custom spinnery and you can make fabric from flax bales as well on here which is pretty cool um, but you can also do swathing now that's where we get onto something a little bit more interesting and a little bit more I say confusing is the wrong word on my mod uh, review I did that posted today we've got a sleep trigger just there we'll get onto all the stuff about the building and slot counts and stuff in just a moment um, but you can do what's called swathing. Now, there are two required mods on here. Crop Inputs Cooperative, which we'll get to later on, and the Pickup Header Pack, which is a new one that's come out. So, what you can do is you can use a mod by BC Bueller called the Swather, the Swather Pack, and rather than harvest the crops normally, and this works for, i trying to remember what it was, wheat, barley, oat, canola, flax, there's another one as well. And all of those, when you harvest, um, or if you use the swather, you can get a swath come off of that. But it's not a straw swath, it's the crop, the whole crop. If you then go over with the pickup headers, you get a 20% boost and increase in that crop yield by doing it that way around. So swathing it with the swather. But here's the weird thing. Considering this is a BC Beulah map with South Sask modding, 
and there are two required mods from BC Bueller, the Swather pack isn't part of the required mods. Um, I thought I would check because I, I thought I'd better add. So the crop inputs cooperative and the pickup header pack are down here. But if we go up to our vehicles and machinery and we go to mowers, which is where you would find it, it's not in here. So whilst you can do swathing, if you want to do swathing, you're going to need that pack separately. That's in addition to the required mods that are listed. There may well be an update and that might get added to the required mods. Both of those mods, they installed automatically, so we're good to go. So yeah, it gets a little bit complicated with that, but the, there's um, a little video as well on uh, the Mod Hub on the website, so you can have a look um, that BC Bueller has put up as well, which makes life a little bit easier. Now, winter is snow joke. Um, it does say, winters are harsh, roads are slippery, tons of snow, it says, has been added in as a sort of custom feature as well. Because of where you are in the world, that's what it's like. So be prepared for that. Um, as far as mods go, like I said, there's no vehicles been added in. The required mods we've talked about, if we go into build mode, into our sheds, we've got a load of custom sheds put in. Under silos, we have got some West Hill bins. We've got a four ring and a five ring bin, 130,000 litres, 160,000 litres. Then we've got these grain leg systems, and there are three different types. These two at 40, 425 grand each, 1.3 million. And this one here, the larger grain leg system at 1.5 million. And there are different plots around the map that have those on already. Uh, I don't think there's anything under silo extensions. Under containers, we've got... Um, Community wells. There are three community wells around the map already we can go and get water from. But there's plenty of other mod mods you can put in for water as well. Uh, under tools, we've got these required mods that we've spoken about already. The crop inputs cooperative, which we'll get to later on. A couple of farmhouse options. We've got the house that's next to us, and there's a, a sleep trigger deck chair, a fold-up lawn chair, if you want to refer to it. Under productions, we have got these two modded. So there's a grain mill, and then the spinnery. As you can see there, that shows wool and cotton, but also flax. So that's the flax bales, so you can get fabric from that. Uh, selling points, I don't think there were anything. Greenhouses, orchards and generators. Oh, I've got it in there, that's all right. Uh, and animals. I don't think we had anything. There is a cow barn, but we haven't got any modded ones. But the animals are showing some of these. As you can see with pigs there, they will take peas, they'll take corn, um, so the animals will take some custom crop types as well um, and other things other than regular pig food. Uh, what was it? Cows as well will take um, in the feed mix. We'll look at mixer wagons as well later on. I said this was going to be a complicated one. Um, wheat, barley, oats, corn, peas um, and flax bales can be used making total mix ration as well on here. So a little bit extra on there. There was nothing on the decoration I don't think. Uh, and under landscaping, I think that was the same. That was There was nothing in addition to fairly standard textures and painting things. Now, once you own the land on all of these properties, if we go back onto that, actually, we can sell these. All of this can be sold. So you can clear this site and a few of the other sites if you want to. Right. Slot counts, then. <laughs> New farmer, 1,234, which isn't too bad, actually. Uh, farm manager and start from scratch is 1,075. The difference is you don't have any of the start machinery or equipment. The buildings are all still here and are on the different plots around the map, all the various different grain bins and sheds and shelters. So you can go around and remove those, those if you want to. So you can bring the slot count down from 1,075 or you can get it all the way down from 1,234 as well. Um, so, equipment then. We've got head around the side there. We've got a cultivator around there. We do have a couple of augers for using the bins because these particular bin types require augers for putting in and taking out you put them underneath for removing from the bins in here we have got i think we have to go in the door first now this is interesting as well lots of nice little touches which are quite cool open the gate that should take us in for our pickup we're going to need that in a moment let's get the garage door open on there we've got our lorry and trailer harvester in here as well we've got some more rooms around the back got lights in the back as well on here so there's a couple of rooms around the back here now this says workshop and there's a workshop trigger when you look around there isn't one you can't seem to see it so if you go over here to this tool chest and then press open gate that drawer opens when that drawer opens there's your workshop trigger so you've opened the drawers to get the tools out and there's your workshop trigger so if you're looking for it and you can close that again 
come back around there again, the trigger's gone. So um, that's where your workshop trigger is in that tool chest. That's quite cool. Um, if we come over across to the, is it a Quonset? It's a Quonset, isn't it? Big old Nissan huts over here on the front. We've got more equipment and machinery. John Deere 4755. We've got a Massey with front loader and some gear. Big old Rossell mash as well. Cedar and uh, sprayer. I think that's all the equipment. Now there's a couple of bits of equipment as we go around the map later on, which aren't part of our equipment that we don't own. They're not leased, they're just map equipment, which I thought was interesting because it was um, one of them, well I say both of them, actually very useful, very useful bits of equipment. So from the farm here, we'll go back to the map. So this is where we are at the moment. I'm going to put some money in and I'm going to show you the plots we're going to buy, which have got extra things on. So we're going to buy plot 30, plot 7, we're going to buy plot 8, which is, where was plot 8? Plot eight's down there. We're going to buy, buy plot 22, plot 27, plot 70, which is there, plot 51, which is there, 33, which is a tiny little plot down there, and plot 11, which is there as well. There might be some other ones, but as far as I know, that's all of them that have got silos, farm buildings on and this one here has got some cows on as well so i'm gonna put some money in we'll buy all those and when we come back to this map i'll show you you'll be able to see all those don't worry we're going to get around the map in a moment it's just a lot to explain and a lot to get through and i, I didn't want to get anything wrong so uh see you in a moment okay we're back on the map and i've bought all of those plots that i was saying there are a few other plots i've tried a few others and i haven't had anything else pop up uh, did i say there wasn't a biogas plant i haven't found a biogas plant on the map anywhere I don't think there is one, but I haven't found one. So, if I come off of there, you'll see now that each of these plots have got silos on. There are some buildings as well. So, a grain leg system on that one. We've got West Hill bins on that one. Same with that one. We'll get around a few of them. I'm not going to go to all of them. Grain leg system on that. West Hill bins on that one. But there are barns and buildings and houses. Not all of them have sleep triggers. Actually, not all of them. I don't think any of the others have sleep triggers, but you can put sleep triggers in because there's that that deck chair, foldable chair, and then there's plenty of modded ones available as well. So there's plenty of options. What we're going to do is go out of the farm this way. I like I, I like this map. I like the sweep of the map. I like the design of it, the layout. It's going to be a challenge to a degree, but it's one of those ones where you can, you can be able to use big machinery and equipment. I like the idea of the winter being quite harsh and the roads being quite treacherous because it's going to add to that element of um, kind of risk. It's, it's going to force you to be more careful. Um, there's a, a smattering of fences around. I'm trying to make sure as we get to different crops. We've just had a look at the flax. Um, when we come past peas and we come past lentils, we'll have a look at the crops. I'm just always up to the top and have a look at those two plots up there. I want to just check the map actually. What have we got up there? Those are oats, aren't they? So it's flax all up there. Oh, actually, when we come back past there, we can check out the uh, the peas there. And then lentils. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll go past the lentils just down there. So we'll get a chance to have a look at them. So we're going to just turn right and head up there, have a look at a couple of those. And then we'll whisk down the main road. Yeah, I'll show you where we are, as I normally do on the map when we get to various different places. But yeah, you've got a nice bit of sweep, open countryside, colour palette's nice, it, it just, it, it works. You know, the lighting's good, not too dark in, in the uh, in the shadows, it's, yeah. I like the addition of all the extra stuff. I, I like the fact that you haven't got to necessarily have extra production chains and things in. There's plenty of stuff that's been included that's going to make it interesting and exciting enough as it is. So, if you buy this plot up here, we've got a big old setup here, a grain leg system. I think this might be one of the 1.5 million litre capacity ones. Large shed, Quonset around the corner as well, and then just up to the next plot that we purchased. We've got the smaller bins. A few of the sites, they seem to have three of the four ring West Steel bins and one five ring, a lot of them. Um, and then saying that this one's got three of the four ring. Those are 130,000 litres each. Another Quonset. So I'm not going to go to all of those plots. 
but, but I did show you on the map where they are, so if you're wondering what plots you can buy, like there might be a couple of others. I I did try to go around all the plots that look like they have something on and, and buy up what I could off camera just to double check. So, heading south, we're going to go past one of the community wells. Should have stopped there, but. Still waiting for a modded like sheriff's police car, something like that. That would be cool. <laughs> so on our right hand side coming up, we've got one of the community wells. They are available as we've already seen, so you can place more if you want to, or whatever other modded ones you want. So community well just there. Then we've got a turning coming up on our left, I want to say. Just looking actually, um, I suppose what we could do, as soon as we're right next to it, I was going to go a slightly different route to this, so another one of the plots. I was going to number them all and say, oh, this is farm two, three, four, five, but realistically, that those numbers I give normally, they're arbitrary. It's, it's just what I give, numbers I give them while I'm doing a map tour. But I like the fact that each of the farms is different. The layout, the topography of each one is different as well. So the little farmhouse at the front there, three more of the West Hill, four ring bins, shelter and Quonset. And on we go. So, was it peas I said we'd see here? It was, wasn't it? And then lentils a little bit further down, wasn't it? There we go. Two four rings and one five. Now these, like I said, on all of the plots, once you've bought them, if we're going to demolish, we can remove all of these. So if you wanted to, you can't get rid of the farm houses on these or the decorative objects, but the sheds, quonsets and grain bins you can. So if you wanted to try and get the slot count down really low, and if you had a lot of plots like that and you're thinking, I'm not going to use them with the grain bins, or you might want to put production chains on them or something like that, you can remove them. Uh, which one was the pea field? I want to say it was... This one here, or oh, is that flax again? No, that's canola. Which one was peas? That's oats. One of these was, I'm sure it was. Am I losing my mind? Where am I? Oh, it was the one above there, just south of the farm. I've missed it. Are we going to go past another one? Oh yeah, these two next to each other. When we get down to there, we'll go past two. I just wanted to show the crops. Just so you get an idea of what they look like. Right. Now as it stands at the moment, I did try with one of the multi-fruit, um, um, the buy anything silos, and because they haven't been adjusted to take these new crop types yet, they weren't available, because I thought oh, I'll just put a, I'll put, put some in a, a trailer. I'm just going to cut down the side of one of these drawers. It's, um, it's all good, it's just a quicker route to get through to the next little bit. Gives you an idea as well of the, uh, the greenery, the sort of texturing and colour palette. So, another big grain leg system. That one's a 1 1.3 million litre one, I think. Barns and buildings. I'm not going to drive over to... But you'll be able to see it. Plot 33. That You see those bins just down there directly ahead of us? And then over to the left there you can see the little blue disc. That's another community well. That's three bins on their own. Now they are just that little plot there, plot 33. 31,000 to get those three bins. It's worth buying it, even if you just sold the bins. Um, you'd make your money back if you got a little plot of land, but if you want the bins there, it's nice to have them sort of scattered around the map. So what we can do now then, directly opposite then, that's our lentils. So that's what the lentil crops will look like. It doesn't grow particularly high. And then the field next door. Is there a field next door?
is peas. Got a few weeds in there, you can see, look. But this is a pea field. So, flax, lentils and peas. We're going to continue. When we get into the uh, the western side of the map is where it gets a lot more um, congested, I think is the best word, with, uh, with cell points and things. Another plot coming up with the, the huge grain leg. Maybe that's the 1.5mm one. It does look considerably larger than the other ones. I do like on here the custom train as well. You know, it's... Um, I think it depends if I've taken the right picture or not. That could be the thumbnail, but... It does look very cool. So as we come across here... The train goes to Saskatoon. On our right, coming up now, we've got uh, Brenda's Fresh Produce. So sale point down here. Takes quite a lot of the, the products. Not all of them, but a lot of the, you know, eggs and wool and various different things like that. Again, people do often ask me, though, when I've done a map tour, they'll say, what sell points take what things. If you come into this menu, scroll down until you get to your um, prices page. Go to each crop type. On the right-hand side, it will tell you what sell points take them. So if you're new to the game and you're not sure where you can sell certain things, um, and if you're not sure where those things are on the map, if you go across to that, bottom right it will say tag place if you press x and tag place it will put a green cylinder that goes from the ground right up into the sky and it will also flash on the map so you can see whereabouts it is um, so if you're not sure what things you can sell or whereabouts sell points are that can definitely help from here across the railway the railway just cuts across the bottom of the map it doesn't take very long for the train to reappear again we've got a rent train point there it's a thousand per hour, I think it is. Yeah, one thousand per hour for the train. We'll probably see it go past in a moment. If we don't see it go past, I'll rent it when we get up over to the main um, railway. Oh, there we go. It's coming now. Look, that's perfect timing, and it looks fantastic. Look, Canada Railway. I love that. It's a nice touch. It's just that that attention to detail, a little bit of extra kind of effort put in to make it specific to where the area is. So as we come down here, another little farm area, and all these plots, this this plot down here, actually, this is one of the larger ones. The, actually, yeah, there was me saying that the prices of the fields weren't that expensive. And um, this entire section down here can be bought, including the roads and a lot of the areas that have got sell points in. That is more expensive. That's 1.2 million, but that's a massive area. You can buy that, which will then give you the ability to place other production chains, silos, buildings, whatever, decorative objects. But as we come down to here, we have got um, Larry's Bale Shipping. So a bale sell point. Sell point. Up from here. Continuing west. You can see the imposing structures coming up. We have got Grain West. If we cross over the main road here, the main road runs up north from here. If we cross over here, you've got um, Grain West. This is just a cell point. It is linked onto the railroad and it looks like one of the railroad silos where you can transfer stuff over. This, is, this one, this side, is just a cell point. So that's Grain West, sell point, just there. We've got another rent train point as we cross over the, the railroad crossing just here. So on the right hand side, just there, there's another rent train point there. We cross over and then we turn in here. We have got the railroad silo itself, so you can transfer onto the train to send it off and sell. So this is um, Grain Pool East, it says. So Grain Pool East is this one here. So you can take it in, put it into the, the um, into the silo, then from the silo onto the train around here. So when you bring the train in, stop the train under there. You can transfer from the train back into the silo and take out from there as well. The other side, just here, this is another sell point. Uh, this is Edgewater Grain. That's a sell point. So Edgewater Grain, 
Cranepool East. As we come through, we've got the um, Crane Mill just through here. That is modded. I think the um, cycles per month might be a little bit faster, but that takes, I say regular things, um, it takes wheat, barley, sorghum, and sorghum notes, I think it is. Um, and you just get flour out, so nothing over and above, sort of fairly normal on that one. Dairy just there, and we've got another rent train point just there at the road crossing. And then we've got bakery just there. And then we move on to these, which are part of the required mod. So the Crop Inputs Cooperative. Now these are places for buying that one's seed, that one's fertiliser, and that one over the back there is uh, the chemical one. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Chemical shed. Now, these, this one and the one over there can be purchased. You can just come in here and you can drive in and you can buy wherever you want. There's a forklift truck here. This is one of the pieces of equipment I was talking about. It's not part of your inventory. It's not leased. It's a map vehicle. Uh, these are decorative. They're not yours. But what you can do is just turn up, go under there and just buy seed. No problem at all. But if you want to run it more like a production, you want to deliver seed pallets or something, you can buy the seed shed. And then I'll we'll turn it off a second because this was a mod. And it's a required mod engine. If you look at the production cost per month, 336,000, but it will produce tons and tons of seed. So you can set it to run and it simulates the fact that they've got to pay for the inputs, they've got to pay for the pallets, they've got to pay for the production, and then you get charged for how much you produce. 20,000 litres at a time. Well, that's the recipe, sorry. So no input in, you haven't got to put anything in, but it will charge you a lot of money. Um, so it depends whether you want to have it loose or you want to have it by pallets. If you do that, the pallets will spawn. It will spawn whole pallets and you can come and grab those if you want to. The difference is with the fertiliser one, that is just a drive through, buy your fertiliser and come out the other side. That one doesn't produce pallets. But then the one at the back, the chemical sheds, if we drive through that one. So this is your fertiliser buy point just here. If we come through to this one, you'll see the tanks there. And this is the second piece of equipment I was talking about. We've got a Braydell K105. That's not on your inventory. It's not leased, it's just there. Um, so, quite handy. You can reset it if you want to, back to the main uh, store if you want. But if we buy this, which is only 10,000 to buy, same thing, if I manage production, just turn those off a second, we can do herbicide or liquid fertilizer and the same thing. Herbicide, 432,000 a month. Liquid fertilizer, 600,000, but it will produce tons of pallets or well, not pallets but um sorry product because you take it all out of the silo around the side here so it's your, your sort of your choice how you want to run that you don't have to you can just come and buy the stuff but if you want to run it as sort of like a production it's, it's a it's a strange one it's a peculiar type of mod really and when you see that price you panic but when you think about just how much it will produce in a month it starts to make a bit more sense then and a bit more realistic pricing i guess so, we'll leave there, and we'll head round to the vehicle store, which is round the back. So you've got a vehicle store and you've got your workshop trigger, are both round here. This is the reset point as well, so any vehicles, machinery, equipment you want to reset, or if you get it stuck or you have a problem, or you slip off the road in the winter and get stuck in a ditch, you can reset back to here. Mind you, that being said, with the winch option now, with the Platinum Expansion, Platinum Edition, you could try towing vehicles out using logs in various different ways and things like that. I know Alien Jim's working on a on a an attacher. You can hook um, you can hook the winches too. Um, that popped up on his channel a little while ago. We cross the road. We got Livestock Market. So we're the animal dealer just over here, and then round the back here we have got check on my list of details that's the livestock bale auction point so another bale sale point just there and we'll go back to the map and I'll show you where we are and where we've been because I haven't done that for a little while so let's go back to the map so we started all the way up there we came out we went up the road took in these two we came all the way down there past that into that one there we came out checked out that one we followed along there and then just followed that little water course into this one we looked across at those two, checked out the lentils and peas here. Then we came out, 
down past that large grain leg, in there to the fresh produce sale point, past the rent train, there for Larry's bales, uh, we then went there to Grain West, rent train in here to the railroad silo and the uh, Edgewater grain sell point. Then we had the grain mill, the dairy, was it grain mill, grain mill, dairy, bakery, we'll get there. The various different sheds, seed shed, fertilizer shed, chemical shed, vehicle store. We're now here at the livestock market and we're going to go up to there. So let's pop out of there. There's a lot going on, but it's not the most ones again, I think, because there's so many areas that I've got, like I say, I've got those um, silos and stuff on. The placing of production chains around the map will be, it will kind of blend in quite nicely, I think. Red Marble Bowl Restaurant sell point, just there. And then a little bit further along, we've got the sawmill. The other thing I was going to point out was custom vehicles, as you can see, also, we've got a jewelry truck there. So around the map there's various different custom vehicles and bits of equipment and stuff which is quite nice. So around the back we've got the wood chip point, around the front is your sawmill production chain. If you want to purchase that you can. For producing pallets of planks. There's lots of little side streets and turn-ins and some of those ones I think for multiplayer as well, if you've got little farms dotted around and people are living in various different places and converging on different places for doing work, so it's nice. We're going to turn right off here because that farm area, I think this is plot 51 that I said has got cows on. Of all the farms and plots that have got silos and stuff, this is the only one with animals. And it is fixed in place, this one. It will do... 100... I want to say 120. It's either 120 or 150. So we're turning up here. The one thing I didn't find here, and I'm going to be totally honest with you about this, um, we've got shed, four ring silos, five ring silos, the West Hill bins. We've got our dialogue box here for the cows. 120, there we go. Open this up. feed trough through there water is automatic now I'm there's not two separate triggers here so potentially that's just milk or it could be slurry and milk because I haven't found a separate slurry point anywhere and if I go in actually what we'll do if we buy a cow I'll show you because at the moment we haven't got an animal so it won't show us but if I just grab a cow just grab any old cow buy that and go into there and scroll down I'll show you so it does say on the right hand side milk straw slurry so it will produce slurry um, but I'm just not sure where it is I've had a bit of a look around haven't found anything um, I thought maybe it might be over to the side there might be a little pump further around I had a bit of a drive around so it could be that milk and slurry is both here but it's unusual just to have one trigger the feed trough is in there and the water trough is already full you don't have to worry about putting any water in there you go. So that's the cow farm. We're going to head north again. So back out. Oh, that's what I was going to show you. I just so remembered. I was saying about the, the animals. Uh, if we go down to animals and look at one of the feed mixers you'll see there the crops that will go in so um, you don't normally have wheat or crop types that can go in it's normally silage hay and straw and sometimes mineral feed so when you click when I clicked on one of those and tried to put stuff in under what was showing as wheat it would take wheat barley oats corn and I think it will do peas under that as well so you can mix any of those together and that's about I think it was 28% of the mix worked out to be the grains then there was silage and there was hay and the straw option you could do straw or you could do um, flax bales in there so that's what I mean about it being a you know for your feeding your cows um, it's a real different mix you can put in there which I think is a, again it's a bit more realistic when you look at um, what different farmers put in for their mixes for their cows they're often they'll often put like beets and potatoes and various different grains in and things like that depending on what obviously what sorts of uh, livestock you're feeding but 
onwards heading north there's a bit of forestry here and there now we have got the sawmill I wouldn't say there's dedicated um, if you look at the tree types they're not like pines or um, fir trees or anything like that that's going to be straightforward for cutting down but you can always plant trees I guess if you want to I'm just looking thinking oh, that's just I've been driving around I haven't I haven't noticed let's just say that I'm also keeping an eye out just in case I have missed the biogas plant and that has baffled me somewhat what's over that side is that another plot I've missed oh <laughs> too busy looking head-on collision as we go into the town to the north let's just check the map over there so we're currently here I'm looking across to there plot 62 by that no no silos or anything over there it's just obviously just a building just a house um, doesn't hurt to check so as we come down into the town itself got a bit of roadworks going on here we've got a gas station off the left hand side uh, what have we got where was the fast food fast food restaurant is just over there and then to our right if we turn down here is that right gas station fast food restaurant yeah debris crusher is around the back here so there's a debris crush around here cell point just there if we go back to our map so we've just gone there we've looked across that we're going to drive past that in a second but there's a river that runs around here with a couple of bridges if you want to go heading back across the map and then back down towards the farm you want to be this side and going in front of the debris crusher to go that way but what we're going to do is turn back around and go up because there's a few more cell points and bits up here including the custom spinnery which will take the flax bales to do flax fabric as well as cotton and wool technically I stopped there you go, fast food restaurant just there. Then we've got the Northern Mill at, that's where all the time, I'm just too busy watching the traffic, I can't go that way. This is just a sell point, Northern Mill. The sell point just under here. cross over the main road again we've got a farmers market on the right hand side coming up just there and then here we've got the spinnery Can you just stop there by the spinnery click on that as you can see fabric wool fabric cotton fabric flax straw nice addition I like that so, I know I've said that a lot, but I do. It's a good map. Quality. I like that as well. I like all the extra colour on there. That's absolutely fantastic. And I like the fact, some maps, I know I've done some mod reviews and some maps where they've added in new crop types. And when you start on the map, none of the new crop types are planted in the ground, which I've always found a bit odd. So it's nice the fact you've already got lentils, peas and, and um, flax already in the ground. And a lot of it, off the start, hang on. If we go across um, it's ready to harvest as well so straight off the bat you can kind of crack on with it um, obviously that's going to depend if you've got seasons on and depending you know where you are in the year so I'm just checking down my list have I forgotten anything I might have missed something I apologies if I have but yeah just to reiterate again if you want to do that swathing thing um, you're going to need the swather pack as well so that's the map edgewater saskatchewan by south sask modding and bc Bueller farms i hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching <laughs>